Hey everybody, this is Pippin with Pippin'sPlugins.com and I'm going to give you an introduction to the Git Text Filter in WordPress today. The Git Text Filter allows us to modify the text that is displayed through plugins and themes for any text value that is localized. So let's say that we're using a plugin. Let's use my Easy Digital Downloads plugin. Uh, it works as a good example for this. And let's say that we have a button, like we do here on our homepage, that says Add to Cart. So this Add to Cart button, we want to change it to say Purchase. Well, there's a couple of ways that you could do this. One, uh, you could actually go in and manually change the plugin code. Two, if the plugin happens to provide an option for you to change it, which it does, but we're going to pretend it doesn't for a second, you could do it that way. Or you could do it through a translation file. You could modify the default .po and .mo files. Well, that's really kind of a pain. So let's look at a better way to do it. And the way that we do that is with the Git Text Filter. The Git Text Filter allows us to take translated text, and by translated, I mean text that is ready for translation. So the text on this button is ready for translation, meaning that if we wanted to, we could easily change our site to Spanish, and we would have a Spanish version of this message right here. So any text that is ready for translation can be passed through the Git Text Filter. And when we do that, we can actually modify the text that is returned. Uh, the Codex has a really simple example where they're changing uh, the comment forms from where it originally says name and email, they're changing it to first name and email address. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to change this button to say purchase. So let's take a look and see how easy that is to do. This is the basic function. You have your just a regular function with three parameters, text or translated text, text and domain. The translated text is the text that has been translated uh, if it's originally in English, but then your site is displayed in Spanish, uh, this is going to be the Spanish version of the text. The text parameter, the second one, is the original text in the original language. And the domain is the text domain for this particular string. And then we simply attach it with add filter to get text. So by default, if you just do this, nothing's going to happen because the translated text is going to come in and then we'll return it. But let's, let's conditionally change it. So let's say if translated text equals add to cart, then let's set translated text equals purchase. Let's try that. Refresh, and now we see purchase. So that's really cool because what we've just done is not only change the text, but we've done it without ever modifying the core plugin code. And you can do this as long as the text that's being displayed is passed is localized so it, it goes through one of these functions double underscore underscore e or underscore x as long as it goes through one of those functions which is very very normal for localized text you can do this um, we can also something that would be good to do is also make sure that the, the translated text that we're modifying it, we want to make sure that we're changing it only for the correct domain so the text domain kind of determines where this translated text comes from so this um, let's go take a look at one of these functions really quickly. Uh, so the first parameter in double underscore is the value that we're actually making ready for translation, and the domain is the text domain. So Easy Digital Downloads has a text domain of EDD. So because I'm trying to make sure that I'm only transfer translating EDD or changing the translated text for EDD, I can do this, and domain equals EDD. Now, go back over here, refresh, and we'll see that our text is still changed. But let's change this briefly so that's incorrect, refresh, and you'll see that it's no longer changed. So that's cool. We can very easily change the text that is translated and make sure that we're only changing it for our particular do domain. Because if somebody else, maybe another plugin or a theme, has the text add to cart somewhere, but you don't necessarily want that one changed, the domain will allow you to make sure that you're limiting it to only that particular instance of the translated text. So now what I would do to enhance this, I would take the example that they have on the codex, let's go back here for a second, and I would set it up in a switch statement where we have switch translated text, and then you can do a case for each text. And what that's going to allow you to do is very easily um, change the, the translated text for a whole bunch of different text strings. Whereas here, we're only doing it for one particular string. But if you want to do 5, 10, 20, you don't really want to do an if statement for each. You should set up a switch statement. But it works exactly the same way. You would simply do switch, translated text, and then case, add to cart, set the translated text equal to purchase. So I hope that makes sense. It's 
really actually pretty simple, but I've heard of a lot of people struggling with get text. The first time that I used it, I kind of struggled as well. Um, so hopefully this has kind of simplified it for you and made you realize that, oh, that's really not that difficult and it's actually quite simple. The beauty of it, um, aside from just working really well, is that it allows us to very easily change button labels, headings, anything we want without ever modifying plugin or theme code. And as long as the plugin or theme is localized, this is going to work just fine.